In a nutshell, you just witnessed vacuum forming, although the result shown here is far from desirable. Compared to the positive mold, the general shape is present, but these creases leave quite a bit to be desired. Attempt 2 isn't much better, however we are working in the right direction, so follow along on my journey as we design a mold and process to get results much like this. To start this journey, we need a few things. First off, a suitable CAD software, followed by an object, and lastly, understanding of molds and mold release. Now in Fusion, they have a built-in tool for doing molds called Draft Analysis. This allows us to see how easily an object can be molded. On screen are three bodies that have already turned Draft Analysis on for the Y-axis. To understand this tool, let's start off with an easy shape like the cylinder. We see three distinct colors, blue and green, are good for drafting, and large portions of red can be problematic. First, let's look at the top. If we can see all pieces of one color, then this side is good for demolding. Same with the bottom. Since we see 100% of the green and blue on both top and bottom, it passes the first check. The next check is to see if large portions of red are present. We will look at why these are problematic in large areas. The two objects shown on screen are to be molded, so we will verify that we see all of the green for both objects, so they pass that check. Now for fun, let's add a mold and see how they separate from the mold as the cube has two large red sides while the cylinder has small red strips. When we attempt to remove the mold from these, watch these sides and we will see that the cylinder releases completely from the mold once it has moved about 0.5 millimeters away while the cube remains in contact with the mold. This will create both friction and possibly a vacuum, making the part almost unremovable without destroying the mold or the part. So now on to what the red is actually telling us. It is indicating that the area is plus or minus 2 degree of vertical, or 88 to 92 degrees. This 2 degree setting is the default in fusion, however I have demolded vacuum molded parts with as little as 0.5 degrees of draft angle. Moving to a more complex part, we can already see the red indicating this will not easily be removed. However, there are other issues with this part. As we can see by looking at the top and bottom, we cannot see 100% of either color. Some of the blue or green is hidden behind overhangs. This part is also not suitable for vacuum forming due to this. Now that we understand the tools needed, we can look at the part we're going to create. It's a belt cover for my coil winder project. With the part pulled up, I'll apply a draft analysis in the y-axis using the default draft setting for this. A quick glance tells me that this part is suitable as I have two distinct areas that are totally visible from top and bottom. From here, a quick analysis of the negative mold is needed to check it for issues as well. With the mold on screen, a draft analysis is applied in the y-axis again using the default settings. Right away, there are some red areas. However, in my case, I'm not worried about them as I will cut those faces off of the part while it's still on the mold to help with release. Although in some cases, vacuum molds will release if enough pressure can be released from those vertical faces as well. Essentially, two opposing 90 degree walls are harder to release than only one 90 degree wall. Beyond that, one problem face, I believe the mold will work fine. I also added an array of holes to the base to help vacuum all the air from the underside of the plastic and help give the part the best chance of working. Now that analysis is done, all that's left is to print the mold and thermoform sheet. The mold is carbon fiber PETG, and the thermoform sheet is PETG, printed at 0.64 millimeters thick on my printer at 130 by 130 millimeter. The sheet is then installed into the clamp system of the vacuum former and raised up for the mold to be placed underneath. Once in place, the heating element is turned on to soften up the thermoplastic sheet. Once it bubbles down, the vacuum is turned on and forming takes place with the throw of a lever. The completed forming looks like this. To unmold, I like to cut away the excess mold using a pair of scissors as it's easier to work with smaller molds, while also making the molded plastic a bit more pliable by removing excess geometry. For this mold, I cut around the bottom with a razor blade, and then I moved on to cut that flat face that was problematic in the analysis. Once that face was removed, the mold was very easy to remove from the part. I followed that up with the final trim with scissors before preliminary fitment of the part. Once I was satisfied with the fitment, I began to prep the part for mounting. This was a very simple process involving an additional printed bracket and some glue. The bracket was printed in carbon fiber PETG as well, and will mount to the winder with two stepper motor mount bolts. A little montage will finish up this build, followed by some final thoughts on vacuum forming and 3D printing.
While FDM printed molds are great, cost-effective measures, the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, offers even more robust ways to create molds. Anywhere from SLS prints to CNC machining out of aluminum or other metals for truly long-term molds. Check them out for all your DIY needs as they offer great service with excellent turnaround times. Visit their website at pcbway.com today and see all that they have to offer. So upon my journey with vacuum forming, I've discovered a few things. First off, the mold has to be strong and temperature resistant as even three to four consecutive formings can deform a regular PETG mold. Second, the sheets can be bought, but not in the same variety as we can print in. The thermoplastics are thermoplastics, so better color and thickness variety is possible with printed sheets. The drawback to this is sometimes you experience separation of the print lines on each layer as it stretches over a mold. This was slightly prominent in my belt cover. I had lots of issues that I didn't document when using sheets printed at 0.2 millimeters thick for speaker cones on this as well. Thirdly, thermoplastics are thermoplastics. I vacuum formed PLA, PETG, ABS, and ASA, as well as carbon fiber variants of a lot of them. The time it takes to heat them up varies, and with higher heat deflection temperature, the forming becomes less pliable at the edges where there isn't as much heat buildup. I've had the most success with PETG, as PLA is very easy to overheat, and ABS and ASA are hard to tell when it's pliable enough, so I've ended up with quite a few duds from them. Overall, if you need vacuum formed parts, 3D printing and either a cheap vacuum former like the one I have or a home built one are a great combination to add to your DIY toolbox. So look forward to me continuing with them in future builds on this channel. Thanks for watching and leave a like or comment if you learned something or if you think I made a mistake somewhere as I'm still quite new to this vacuum forming. Thanks again.